For today's video, I'm answering a question that was on the Discord because I have because there is a channel now where you can go ask questions and have them answered eventually in a video if I can make a video out of it. Okay, so yeah. Um, today's question is how do you keep track of different comic ideas? And at first, I'll admit I kind of skipped over this question because I don't really know exactly for a fact like how to do it and I have a feeling that I'm probably terrible at it well that was like my initial thoughts on the matter and it's like I'm not bad at keeping track of things by any means but like I don't I, I've never really thought about how I've done it so if you honestly asked me like straight up like how I keep track of ideas my answer would be like I just try to remember them and if I forget something it's like no harm no foul however that doesn't really sound like good advice to me and it's not exactly true so I sat down and I thought about it for a little while and I think I have an answer I keep comic ideas on track by giving them very dedicated spaces um, whether that's a notebook a folder on my computer or a Scrivener document Usually it's a Scrivener document at this point in my life. Um, I like having dedicated spaces to work things out. And to go with that, I make sure that I have different goals and time commitments to keep um, different pieces of work, once again, like in their own space. In order to keep things organized, it's very... At the very least, I need to have like separate piles of clutter. <laughs> I can't let all my clutter mix together. So what do I do with my piles of clutter? Like what are these piles? And like when I think about that, that's a little more confusing. I have scripts, drafts, designs, pages, like of course I have all of that stuff. But then I have four like other categories, which are, are, are maybe less obvious. So those categories are resources, outlines, uh, Bibles and rants. Um, very good category titles. And the amount I have in each of them varies greatly um, between projects and usually correlates to the size of the piece or um, how much fantasy is involved in the piece. So let's get into these categories. The first is resources. I keep uh, research tools, summaries of research um, that I've made myself, and I keep them all available in a folder for easy access whenever I need a refresher. For nine points, this isn't actually in um, any file. This is like a, a, a little Discord chat where me and Ursula point post um, nine point related things so that we're both um, aware of what's going on. But it's really good to keep links and references, um, especially when you find ones that you really like. And if you really, really like them, it's good to save one to your hard drive or whatever if you can, because gosh dang, sometimes things get taken off the internet and that really sucks. So don't get caught in that and make files of things you like. The next thing I keep is outlines. I've talked a bit about outlines here and there, so I won't go in total depth of like what my outlines look like, but I keep outlines and planning um, for ideas in a nice space to be found later. And this is all plot related planning. If the story is like one that I wrote, by the seat of my pants, then I'll usually make an outline after the fact to keep my mind straight about what happened, especially if I'm going into editing. That's really useful for when I make changes. Sometimes, even when I'm writing, I will keep an outline log type thing where I write what happened in a scene after I've written it so that I can check back on it very quickly while still writing the story so I don't go completely off base about what happened before. The third important category is Bibles and by that I mean story Bibles and those are like encyclopedias of information about your story. Inside of them they are like the most in-depth of things so like I keep maps detailed breakdowns of like how magic systems work, character sheets, and my character sheets will have like details of their personality, their appearances, um, what they've done, what their motivations are, and yeah, like the, I'll, they'll be in they'll be as in-depth as I need them. If it's like a background character, I might just write what their name is like and, and where they showed up. Basic information. Um, other things I keep in my, um, in my Bibles are um, histories, cultures, like you name it. If it has to do with the world and it's information about the story that I need, 
or might need in the future, I'll keep it there. I tend to turn to working to this at any time I'm writing and I come to a point in the story where I feel like I don't have enough information to tell it properly or give it justice, or if I've added a bit of information that I might need to expand on later, I'll put it in there just so I can refer back to it. It's also good to write down characters as I add them so I don't forget that they exist. It just helps make things a lot more cohesive um, if I have everything in a nice neat little folder. For a bit of an example of like what this ends up looking like, I'm not going to show it to you because it's very spoilery, but my nine point bible is roughly like 20,000 words long um, and I have like six different charts like I have a map, I have like a calendar, a height chart, royal lineage, lineage. like it gets very big. It it's epic fantasy. Um, the magpie on the other hand, my story bible for that is about 20,000 not 20,000, is about 2,000 words, maybe less, and it's just um, descriptions of the different characters, and I have an age chart just to keep things in order. Like I said, like, the size of the story informs a lot, and, like, the amount of characters will definitely inform a lot. Um, the final section I mentioned is rants, and this is by far my most used folder, and it's the strangest. Um, I use these files to just freeform, like, write whatever I am feeling at the moment. I usually use it to air out confusions with my own story until I find a solution. I, I'll save them and I'll go back to them sometimes, but usually it starts with, like, a question like, what the heck is my character doing? What does this term I wrote even mean? Like, what are the implications of this? What's this? What's that? You know? Like, what the heck am I doing? Why is my story so terrible? Bones, please help me fix this. Those are, like, the the prompts I go off of, and then I just rant until I find an answer. I call them rants because they're never really guaranteed to, like, fit in any category one way or the other. Um, sometimes they don't even end up being story-related at all. It might be just, like, my emotional state at the moment that comes out. Um, maybe the answer to my question ends up being, like, you need a nap. That's the answer. But either way, they're, like, an important part of figuring things out and keeping things on track and knowing what to tackle. Finally, my advice for keeping stories on track is to talk them out with people. I like asking for speculation, sharing ideas, um, trying to figure out what's broken, what's expected of my story, and if I'm, like, matching expectations. Um, I do that with Ursula, I do that with um, beta reading partners. I think um, the more studied you are on your own story, the more you'll be in control of it. Like, um, if, if, if you could get like people to ask you questions about your story and you can confidently answer them, I don't think you have to worry. But if you are struggling with basic information about your story, yeah, you're going to have trouble keeping your ideas in order. And, like, sometimes it's good to just review all your ideas like you would for, like, a test um, before you go about working at it again. Just so keep, you keep things fresh in your mind and you feel confident about things. And on a side note to that, um, be warned that people will ask questions to answers that you don't really need to answer ever. Like, sometimes you don't need to go into the into the economics of your story. Sometimes you don't need to go totally in depth into where magic came from because if it does it's if it's never relevant, it doesn't matter. And if you uh, focus too hard on um, details that end up being irrelevant, you're never gonna write your story. and that's more of a problem than not knowing the answers to some of these questions. Um, thank you for all of your questions. I'm gonna slowly go through them all. maybe. like some of them I might not go over. Um, but uh, yeah, keep asking them in the Discord, and if you really, really want the answer, and you keep asking, like, even if, like, don't spam, obviously, but, like, if I seem to have missed it, like, you can ask again. Um, I might compile a bunch of smaller questions that have, like, less talking into, like, one big old Q&A video, and if you want to join the Discord, that's a link below. Um, you can also follow me on social media. You can... Uh, give me a high five. You can read my books. Um, they're available on Etsy and Gumroad. Heck, look at me plugging things like a master. I've been having a lot of fun this week, even though I've been pretty, pretty, um, 
pretty in poor spirits, I, if I do say, but like y'all are keeping me keeping me pretty happy. And I've enjoyed seeing everyone's cat sonas or nine point sonas. Very good. 10 out of 10. Um, tomorrow we have another video and we also have a live stream. So make sure to check that out. And hopefully I'll see you there. Goodbye. Good luck on your writing.